Okay, so top five XLR microphones under $300. No more exhibition needed besides that, but I do wanna give a couple clarifying statements as to how I chose these five microphones. Here is what I'm considering for this test. These are all mics that I know extremely well, not just mics I've had experience with, these are microphones that I currently own and use often. They gotta be good at room rejection, because if you're looking at a $300 microphone, odds are your environment, much like mine, isn't suited for a very sensitive microphone. For this reason, the majority of microphones on this list will be dynamic microphones. For the condenser microphones on this list, we will be looking at self-noise. For the dynamic microphones on this list, we will be looking at gain ratings, or how much gain is needed in order to power the microphone. These microphones need to work in a ton of different applications, whether you are a content creator, a voiceover artist, a, a musician, guitarist, it, it, which is also a musician. Anything that you would need a microphone for, these things need to be kind of Swiss army knives. And with that, let's change to the first microphone on this list because this one is definitely not under $300. So the first microphone on this list is the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure. The 440 Pure is my number one most used condenser microphone on this list. As I always say, it has a pretty bright sound to it. So if that's your thing, if you want to accentuate a dark sound with a brighter sound, or you want something that cuts through a mix really dramatically with plenty of high-end detail and nuance in the sound, then this is your mic. Despite its bright tone, it does reject the room around it fairly well. It also features an incredibly low self noise of 7 dBA, which is so low you don't have to worry about it in essentially any application. Self noise is really only that big of a worry whenever you start to stack a ton of the same takes on top of each other or during voiceover, but you can rest assured knowing that despite the budget of this microphone, it's not going to have any issues when it comes to self noise, which commonly is a thing to worry about with condenser microphones on a budget, but not here. I find myself using this microphone a lot for acoustic guitar primarily, for beautiful beautifully detailed finger picking tones if I'm being even more specific. I would happily use the 440 for voiceover as well, even though it is a bit of a brighter microphone, it has no issues with siblings, at least on my voice. It's basically an all-rounder, and if you guys are familiar with the channel, you know that this is one of my top recommendations for a budget microphone. It should be no surprise that it is on this list. This will make more sense later in the video, but let's do a little line of voiceover that you're gonna hear blind. All right, I just Googled one-liners. I don't promise these are good. In fact, they're guaranteed to be bad. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. That's gonna make more sense in the next microphone. <laughs> all right, let's move on to my second condenser microphone pick, which is this behemoth right here. Okay, you are hearing now the Neat King B2. Okay, so one thing really important about the Neat King B2 that I think a lot of people forget about is everything that you record with it will need to be published with our sponsor, DistroKid. Wait, 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 wait. I know what you're doing. I already said it before, you're mashing that little button. But in reality, this is a sponsor that should really matter to you. And if you're watching this video, directly applies to you. Because DistroKid is how you publish your work. Like I always say, it's how you get it from the bowels of your computer, deep in subfolders and subfolders that will never see the light of day, to in front of virtually everyone. And I'm happy to announce that this no longer just applies to music. DistroVid, is a very similar service that applies to music videos. DistroKid will get your music on Amazon Music, Tidal, Apple Music, Vivo, and you keep 100% of the earnings that you use with DistroVid. Now for $99 a year or less than $10 a month, you have unlimited video uploads for any artist or band. And that includes stuff like custom thumbnails, 4K footage, and let me remind you, 
100% of your revenue. And with DistroKid and with Vivo specifically, you get all the same treatment that you would see on high profile artists. Music videos on a bunch of different platforms on Roku, Samsung TV, Comcast, everywhere that Vivo is, your music is too. I'm always trying to tell you guys all the different ways that DistroKid and now DistroVid go beyond the call to action and provide you with a bunch of different resources to essentially manage your entire business as an artist. It is more than just a publication service and DistroVid is yet another example. Definitely go check it out in the link below to get an even further discount with code AUDIOHAZE. DistroKid is, is a service you're probably already gonna use. So it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, the Neat King B2. It's funny, it, it's kind of the opposite thing as the 440 Pure, or in some ways, two sides of the same coin, I guess. Both come from a long line of audio heritage, just different companies. You can trace the DNA of the Neat King B2 directly back to Blue Microphones. This was invented by one of the original founders of Blue Microphones, whereas Lewitt is kind of a direct spring off of AKG. Both feature incredibly low self noise, this one at only 6 dBA, pretty decent room rejection, especially for a condenser, and they pack a huge tonal punch at a button. Budget. But here's where the differences come into play. Where the Lewitt is a brighter tone, the King B2 is most certainly a darker tone, making them similar on the more measurable spec information, but whenever it comes to the actual tonal quality of the microphone, they are very different. King B2 seems to be directly tailored towards voiceover. It's great for a mellower, sweeter tone, and as many of you guys might know, darker microphones tend to not grate the ears as much over extended listening periods. So if you're using a microphone that is primarily meant for vocal applications. You don't need any bright halo around your voice, or maybe you have a brighter voice and you wanna tailor it towards a more smooth, darker tone, then you might wanna go with the King B2. This microphone is also all about camera presence. It is massive. I had to adjust the springs on my arm just so it's not falling out of frame right now. And that was intentional. Part of the design of this microphone was meant to appeal to uh, streaming, services, platforms. It's a microphone that wants to be on camera, and that's evident both in its playful design and its sheer mass. It is just as much a set piece as it is a actual microphone. It's important also to note here with the King B2 and also the Lewitt, both of these microphones come with the peripheral support I think is necessary in order to work in a studio setting, especially a bedroom studio setting. That being a shock mount, both of which are custom tailored for the microphone itself and a built-in pop filter. Both of them approach it in different ways. The Lewitt has a magnetic pop filter that just slides on top, and the King B2 has an integrated pop filter into the design of the capsule that can slide off. Okay, now let's do that same pickup line, but this time you're going to be hearing both of these two microphones blind. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Okay, let's move on to our first dynamic microphone. Okay, so next we are talking about the Shure MV7. Some of you might have noticed beyond the white color, this resembles a, a more iconic microphone that you might be familiar with, that being the Shure SM7B. Now there's a lot of arguments that I'm going to make here that make the Shure MV7 more appealing to me than the regular Shure SM7B. Those being some of the things I talked about in the beginning of the video, mainly gain necessities. The Shure MV7 needs less in order to power it than the Shure SM7B does. But not only that, there's a lot of other features to the MV7 that make it more flexible than its big brother. Primarily the fact that it is a hybrid XLR microphone and a USB microphone. Now what that means is you can use it without an audio interface. You can use it just directly hooked up to your computer. Not only that, you can monitor out of it and it has all of the controls on the actual top of the microphone. But when you don't wanna do that and you wanna use it just in a traditional recording setup, you can just plug in an XLR and it needs just less power than the SM7B does. And you'll notice a very similar sound profile. You know, there's one thing whenever it came to the MB7 that we'll talk about in the full review that almost made me not put it on this list, but 
I had to remove my personal feelings a little bit and be just a little bit more objective here because it sounds like the Shure SM7B does. It is a almost a more extreme, more exaggerated version of the SM7B's tone. It is equally dark, it is equally low mid-range forward, if not even more so, to the point where it feels a little bit like a tonal parody of the SM7B with some of the nuances removed. But that being said, a lot of people just like that tone. So I have to remove my own personal preferences out of that equation. Just know that the MV7 to me feels like a tonal imitation of the SM7B, but perhaps exaggerated. Some of the nuances lost in the tuning of this microphone, in my opinion. That being said, if you need an SM7B, we're gonna talk about another microphone in the list, both visually and tonally, and with more flexibility and cheaper, this one, get the MV7. I almost forgot, I almost forgot. Let's now do the blind test, this time with a dark dynamic microphone. Hopefully it sticks out like a sore thumb, but let's do it compared to the 440 Pure and the King B2. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. All right, next mic. Okay, we are now talking about the Behringer XM8500, which is known around here as a microphone that is so cheap, it's stupid. You're looking at about 20 or $30, which in the context of this list almost seems like a joke, a meme. I mean, you would pay more for off-brand condensers on Amazon, but this microphone is not joking around. There is very little compromise that you will be experiencing on the XM8500 for the price you're paying. We talked about all the different parameters that I have laid out on the top of this video. Mics that I know very well, that I use. Mics that aren't very gain hungry. Mics that are good at room rejection. Let's just add on top of that, a build quality that is so good, you would struggle to find differences between this microphone and a microphone two to three times its price. So if it's budget that you're after, this is it. Period. End of story. The XM8500 is roughly 80% of the microphone that you would expect of its competitors at around 30% the cost. Now let's talk about the only downside. And admittedly, this is kind of a relative speak. This is something that I found just through my own tests and my own opinions on the microphone, which is, you know, it, it is a darker microphone, somewhat emulating a voiceover tone as the Shure MV7, although not as dark. But its handling of these extreme transient responses in the low end are rather poor. Quite muddy in the low mid range and in the far low end, but the good news here is this isn't something that's hard to EQ out. Arguably, my biggest video in the last couple months was recorded on a processed vocal chain of the Behringer XM8500, and I will put that chain on the thing now, so you can hear what this thing sounds like with more of a professional tuning. You're not hearing any internal buzz, any hiss or noise, something that you might expect from a microphone from this caliber or price. I struggle to find anything that would stop the budget audio engineer from just buying this microphone, except maybe the last mic on this list. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. You already saw this coming to the point where I almost didn't even include this microphone. I was gonna put a caveat at the beginning of this video that said, I'm just gonna exclude the SM57. I'm just gonna say obviously and move on to microphones that you might not expect, but the reality is, A, I already had a video that is almost at 100K now, primarily targeted towards an audience that didn't even know this microphone existed. So let's try and keep this in the running here. It is also everything that the XM8500 is trying to be. Remember when I said the XM8500 is about 80% of its competitors? Well, this is the 100%. It has a far more even tonal response with a small peak in the high end, but that adds to me a lot of presence in my voice. It also isn't quite as muddy and inaccurate in the low mid range. It's like zooming in on a camera and looking at how accurately it figures out the edges of an image or the edges of your skin. The SM57 is much clearer in that regard. It's slightly harder to power. It is slightly better at room rejection though. And most importantly, this is probably the most prolific microphone on the face of the earth. Weirdly, this 
made some people mad, but you can probably assume that an SM57 was used on your favorite record. And the reason why I find that important is if you are looking to start your career in the audio world and you don't know what you're doing, there is almost certainly a blog, a forum, a website out there that will teach you how to accomplish it with an SM57. There are resources out there that teach you how to record an entire album on an SM57. So this is the true definition of a generalist budget microphone and to, to just disregard it at the front of this video I think doesn't do it justice. So this is still on the list. None of these were in order. You just can't disregard the SM57 like that. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. Are you a parking ticket? Because you've got fine written all over you. So I wanna answer a question that I think some of you might have right now, long time watchers, which is, where's the Rode NT1? It's a good question. One of my most popular videos on the channel, and probably the most popular microphone on the channel, arguably, is the Rode NT1. And I love this mic, but I told you some of the things that I need at the top of this episode. And one of them was good room rejection. Even though the Rode has a really low self noise and a, a great tuning, and it is incredibly flexible, there are better microphones in this budget class for things like room rejection. I would probably put it right below all these microphones in terms of whatever, the five microphones I'm mentioning on this list. It, it's right there near the top. But in terms of microphones I own and use, there are just other microphones I find myself using more often that I think will fit more budget users. You know, if this video helped convince you of one of these five microphones, one of the primary ways this channel is supported is through affiliate links. Not the only way. If you're going to purchase the microphone anyway, I would really appreciate it if you used those links. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you'd like, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you'd like to work on a project with me, you can email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. Goodbye. Goodbye.